Um, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Thanks for hanging out with me and Jeff today. Another episode of What's the Right Shot Live. This is actually episode number 245. And uh, we are going to look at, uh, whoops. Um, can you, everyone see my screen okay? Can you see the, the point we got teed up here, Jeff? Yeah, I got you. Okay. So uh, let me introduce um, the great Dick Johnson, returning serve here in the the bluish greenish shirt. Um, really, one of my heroes in, in in senior tennis, and I've known Dick for probably I've known him well for about ten years. I knew of him prior to that. Um, unfortunately, he passed away. Gosh, year and a half ago. But really, one of my heroes, right? And we all sort of have them in different parts of our lives. But in, in terms of the senior tennis, this was really one of the all-time great guys. And, you know, he ended up with around mid-40s in terms of the gold balls. Um, the guy was prolific, traveled around the world, lots of, lots of USA World Cup teams. And um, really, for me, was the guy that off the court was this gentle soul. But on the court was this just bulldog of a competitor. I mean, it was just like, they were, they were, they, there was such a dichotomy, right? Between on and off the court. He wasn't a jerk. I mean, it wasn't like he was a, you know, an asshole on the court and a great guy off. He was just super competitive and, um, and really taught me a lot. And, you know, the, he and I won the national indoor seventies um, probably a few months before he passed away. Um, and I just remember uh, in, the, in the finals, we beat the number one seeds in the finals, five and two. And I don't think he missed a return. Uh, I know I've told you this story several times, but I just, <laughs> it's such a great story for me to kind of remember. We go upstairs to have a, cel a celebratory beer and, and I said, God, man, I don't think you returned. I mean, I, I don't think you missed a return. And he just kind of said, well, um, I just, yeah, I'm just trying to get it over there. And and um, I'm assuming it's going to come back. And then we'll just, we'll just kind of take it from there. So all of a sudden, I realized for the first time, this big epiphany. I've been putting so much pressure on myself to always think I've got to hit a, you know, out of, out of a 10, scale of 10, I've got to hit a, an 8, an 8.5 return if I really want to compete in, you know, at this level of doubles. And I just realized then, God. If you're, if you're like a six all day long, I mean, you're going to have to back up the truck with gold balls. I, I, and I, I just think the perception is, at least for me, was kind of skewed. So yeah. um, you've seen this point. What do you want to do with this point? You want me to uh, kind of run through it and sort of show the whole point, and then we'll go back and kind of dissect each each yeah, shot I think I think play it out because it's you know it's, it's you know it's a 17 second clip you know so it's it's not a long point but I think um, there are some there are a couple of like drastic for me um, like that stand out and okay. especially in, in contrast to two weeks ago the the clip we looked at before yes. so there's something that happens here that happened in the first one that doesn't happen here that actually creates the problem okay. So, so it's, uh, yeah, so let's watch. So I'm going to play it, and there is no volume to this. For whatever reason, I can't figure it out, but there's no volume on this. Um, but I'm going to play the whole point. My is serving. Uh, my bride serving. Dick Johnson with a return. Yours truly with the volley. And who is Mai's partner? Um, Christian Choi. This kid oh, okay. actually went to, he, he actually played, he played in the tour for a little bit. Yeah, we actually played uh, some dubs on the grass. Did. Super. Last, last year. Super yeah. talented athlete. Very, yeah. Super um, nice guy too as well. It's fun being on the court with him. Okay, where do you want to start? Um, oh, and by the way, guys, if you have any questions, uh, the way to um, ask them is in the chat box. You can ask them anytime. Just go ahead and tee them up, and, and Jeff and I will both be um, monitoring the chat box. Let me see if I can find it because I've closed mine down. Here we go. Uh, <laughs> good. Oh, God. There it is. It's way over there. Good. Okay. So where do you want to start? Um, 
let's, uh, oh, wait a second, I gotta close this up a little bit. Uh, chat box got a little big there. Um, well, so, so right off, I think, um, you know, you guys have been playing and, and, and Dick knows, you know, I think that my is not serving and volleying. Right. Right. So he, he's got a pretty good feel for that. He scoots around and he, you know, hit, hits a ball basically right across the center strap. And, and, and look at, and look where Christian is. Yeah. And so that, that's a, that's a major point right there for me is that I, on the one hand, like at the very start of the point, I, I like the fact that he's taking a much more service court centric position, not covering you know, center line to the outside of the alley as his position he's taking. So I really like that. What, what I think a big flaw here though, in, in this opportunity is that my hits a good body serve here. Dick has to slide to the center of the court to get his forehand around, but Christian doesn't read that. So all he does is move forward instead of moving court centric because the minute Dick gets that, gets slot, forced to move inside, the down the line really becomes a non-option. Yeah, it's pretty he's, tough he's to read. Go, it's really, really tough to redirect that up the line. Right. He's, he's caught inside a little bit. You can see it. And so he's going to have to pull it left. And so for me, it, that's kind of like, that was like a possible, you know, uh, crime of opportunity there for Christian to really kind of step into the center of the court and see if he can steal something. Right. Um, and so I, I think that's like, in terms of a mistake or a bad read, I think Christian made a mistake there by not reading the inside serve on Dick and not positioning himself to be able to take advantage of something that was kind of, you know, court, you know, just across the middle of the court. Okay. All right. Um, this is interesting to me when you, you, you brought up the point that, that, that Dick either because of what's going on with the match or he just knew Mai's not going to serve in volley. So even though he's really kind of forced I me, mean, he can't really hit an approach return because my does hit a good serve he's kind of stuck but now he looks out at the landscape and sees that christian hasn't moved and my has stayed back and what i love here is this whole thing about well why can't i just start moving in and, right. and if you look at this i mean he's starting to move in well everyone would say well man you cannot get caught in no man's land you can't be here when you play a shot and and to me, it's, I mean, you and I both know that if you can't play a transitional shot from here, it's, it's going to be a rough go. So yeah. I love the fact that he, he does play a transitional shot from the middle of the court right in yeah. here. And uh, I, like, I, like, I like Christian's position right now. Now he's made that court-centric little shuffle. Yeah. So I like that because Dick would have to take this thing to the outside of the court to actually pass Christian and hits it from that deep in the court. He'd have to hit, you know, the ESPN highlight shot. Right. So right. I like Christian's position right there. I like the fact that you're starting to squeeze the center a little bit. So just a standard volley with very little stroke technique, right? I mean, he really, yeah. he waits. And to me, one of the things I like to feel on my volleys is that I've created space for the balls to my side. And I like to time it to where I kind of have a little body nudge against the ball rather than just all being stroke technique. Right. So that, yeah. that, that, that his setup really never wraps behind him. He no. actually keeps it out here to his side. And then as he, as he makes contact, he doesn't stop. He just, people say, Oh, well, man, you know, you shouldn't run through it. Look, he's not running. Right. He's just working his way to the next best court position. Right. And it's the same yep. thing with the volley. I mean, just like I was talking about in the beginning, when we started Dick Johnson knows that he cannot hit a good enough volley from here to create a tough enough shot that he won't have the mindset. Like I just got to get it over there. I'm assuming this is going to come back and that's okay. Right. All right, well, I'll, let, I'll let you take it from here. Um, I like, you know, the other thing I made a note of here was your positioning right now. My has the ball like right there, pause it right there. So again, I like the fact that you're not, and I made a note of this because there's other places in the rest of the point where 
you don't position yourself to cover the ESPN highlight shot. Don't waste good court position on over covering the down the line or thinking they're going to hit the cute little cross courts. So then you leave the gap in the center open. And I see that a lot, you know, in league tennis and things that these, the overplaying of certain positions, but the positions they're overplaying are, are the extreme possibility of getting ripped in the end. You, you know, the margin is this much right. <laughs> you That's know, right. to cover. So I like the fact that even though Mai has the ball outside you, She's still inside the court. So where you're at right now, you can cover complete, probably in one step with your racket out, you've got the line covered literally right to the edge of the line. Right, right. So you don't need to be anymore over there. Yeah. So I really, I like that positioning right there. Okay, good. I think the other thing too is that um, we've got a little staggered position between the two of us that Dick hasn't hit it and tried to get on the same parallel with me Right. Because I've always thought, Jeff, that when when you're cross court from the ball in doubles and both of you were up at net, when you're cross court from the ball as Dick is here, the ball is directly in front of me. It's cross court from Dick is that you probably do have to cover more court and you might have to cover the great lob that I just won't be able to get to. If you're if you're too tight in the net, man, I mean, to me, she's going to be not only is, is a tough lob here going to be a problem for us, but a tough lob into this corner right. is going to be tough as well. So, and, 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 and we're going to see kind of how the point ends, but um, all right. So I'll let you take it from here. So she's, she throws up a lob. Look at those ballerinas feet there. Well, He's the Baryshnikov of tennis right now. Watch this guy go up and, Hit this overhead. That's funny. You know, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you exactly what I'm thinking right now. Is oh God, God, please let me just. I hope I don't trip and fall over backwards. It's what I trip and fall right backwards, here. right? Because it is a pretty. I mean, it is a damn good lob. Because for me, that's air right there. Right. That's major air right there. We got a. Well, look like maybe two inch vertical. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> well, maybe with my right foot. I think this is still. This is maybe credit card stuff right there. But look, my, my whole mindset with this is um, all I want to do is be able to hit this overhead in a way that I can reasonably not have to end up back here, right? That I can, that I can right. maybe reclaim some part, of my, some part of my net position. And so right. really, this is like, in my mind, this is like an approach overhead. Let's throw it in the middle buy a little time, put the brakes on. Right. Let's boom. <laughs> There's kind of a, a shudder. Right. I think the Richter scale in Coachella Valley on this day, probably <laughs> right here went right about there. Clunk. Is that a, is that a 3.5 or a 4.0? Oh? <laughs> in terms of Richter scale, it might be more than right. that. Um, so, so thankfully, thankfully, and look, Here's, I think here's something else to consider, too, is that um, if, if you're the lobber in this case, and I like to lob with the intention that not only is it going to be deep, I'm not thinking about trying to lob it so deep that it goes over the guy's head, but if I can right. lob it deep enough, maybe I should be following it in because, because this, this stroke technique right here, obviously – Right is is compromised, so my decides that she's just better off staying, you know, several feet behind the baseline. Right. I would probably, even if I can't move in, I would probably at least get up on top of the baseline and see if I can't take time away from this player going up. Yeah, and and whatever they hit back, can we get on it early enough? And and she fortunately for me, she she's staying back, so she gives me a little time to start to recover. Right. So I like, um, I like the fact, you know, she puts the lob up. Christian sees it, her partner sees it, and he starts to make his first move into kind of a defensive, you know, giving himself some room to react and everything. Um, this, this next part of it, though, is where he fails to make the next move all the way back, and that's what really causes the major issue here, is that he now holds his position, and you take the ball right back to the same place. You just hit the overhead. 
and now he's 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 stuck between the dock and the boat yeah so there's no there's nothing for him to do whereas if if the moment she put up that second ball he had taken the position and gotten all the way back behind the baseline he'd be able to crank on a forehand right now and and there's some space for him to work with because right. of your positioning that's right and so th this is where last week, you know, two weeks ago, we had the clip and we talked about your partner who, after you put up the second lob, he completed his move behind the baseline, which gave him the opportunity to t hit that second ball down the line, which opened, which created the opportunity for your team to take the net back and, and win the point. And so this is, I think, um, this is a kind of a classic error sometimes is that you don't make the second move, your partner throws up the second lob. You have to take full advantage of that and get into a position that allows you now to reset the point and then collectively as a team, we're going to work back our, our way back into this. Um, Good. Good. Well, so he, has to, think, to play, he has to play a tough volley on this, I think. Right. I don't think it bounces. I right. think it ends up being a stab volley and, because of, right, his, his, his position. Could my have played this? Maybe. But... But how, I don't know if Christian knows that she's but, there. But you see, if, if Christian had moved, you know, um, go ahead and go backwards here and let's put the ball on your strings. Boom. So, so right, right there, boom. So where he is, had he made, the time the ball comes off of Mai's racket to your racket right now, had he made the final move? Right. My wouldn't even worried about that ball coming like that she had to play it. She, she would have read the play and not even made an attempt to play the ball. There you go. There you go. Yeah. You know, because she would, she would feel and know that Christian's on, he got, he's covered, he's there and he's going to be coming into whale on a forehand. Um, so, so this is the, this is the type of thing that I think, you know, for most players that really creates uh, problems for them is, is that positioning is constant. Every ball that gets hit means that you have to take a new position. Um, and then once your partner hits the ball, there's another adjustment in positioning based on where the geometry is being created from. So it's, it's like there's almost two subtle position movements every time the ball is crossing over the net. Love it. So. And then, and so then, you know, my my is squeezed to the center, and so now Dick just hasn't, you know, he has a plenty of room to work with here. Okay, and 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 here's what I love about this volley, it's played with the feet. Yeah, I mean, there's no there's no hesitation, and I th I see too many players who do everything right. They they kind of see that this ball is going to be deep. It could present an opportunity and now all of a sudden they just stay right here and not only does it give even if this is their target by staying right here to execute a perfect highlight reel looking volley technique by waiting you give this player another moment to get at least one step back over here now all of a sudden your brain goes well dude you better really go ESP on, right. on this thing because now your yeah. target's tinier. Right. And all that all the Dick does is he just he takes time away with 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 footwork and just nudges himself through it. And does he care that he ends up in here? He doesn't care about that because he knows that I can cover. Right. Right. So, I think mean, yeah, it's a great, it's a great, great movement with the feet hitting, you know. Quiet hands and busy feet make for good volleys. God, you got to write that down. Could someone write that down, please? <laughs> I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna put that on a T-shirt. That sounds good. Um, okay, guys. Think, so, you, guys, you've seen the let, point. Let, of time. I'm sorry, Jeff. Go ahead. Finish up. Um, I was gonna say, go back to um, uh, after Rit, after Dick hits the volley and his positioning, because this is another key here in this point. Uh, is right here. No, no, no. Go, go back all to the to right after his return and his okay. first volley. Okay. Um, it's another note I made because um, it's really critical. He takes the inside, but now let him go. So keep going, keep going, keep going. Um, there you go. Keep going, keep going. Right before my makes contact, he keeps going. He makes he finds his position. Right there. Okay. So 
so notice that because of what he created, the geometry he created, Mai has the ball on her strings in the extreme corner of the court, right? So the ESPN shot for her is the short little flip to Dick's right. Over in here. Right? There's room there. So yeah. someone might say, well, why doesn't, she just, why doesn't she just hit a little roller into that? Because that's the ESPN shot. And so Dick doesn't waste a moment worrying about that, but he takes a court-centric position, right? So, yeah. so that, this is what I'm talking about, is that you're still, you're still well in the court. You're not over-covering the line. Dick takes a court-centric position based on what he created. And now for my hitting down the middle is not a good option. It doesn't look good. So, so the positioning here kind of forces my into seeing like, you know what, I need to throw this thing up and let's see if we can renegotiate positions here, you know, renegotiate the point. Cause, cause right now after the second hit, um, we're not in command of the point. Yeah. Uh, that's great. No, I, I, I totally agree with you. And I think too often, oh, well, look, my, my thing with doubles is if you can cover, well, no, my thing is you can never cover 100% of the court. I mean, right. could she hit an, uh, you know, an ESPN highlight shot here? She could. And Good. would, and would we be able to cover it? We wouldn't. So my, my contention, Jeff, and it's just kind of a number just to be a number, but we can we can probably cover eighty percent of the court on at any given moment, right? And if we can cover eighty percent of the court, one hundred percent of the time, we're going to get the win. It's as simple as that. Yeah. And I think and, and 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 look, I mean, sometimes you might play against someone where you've been in this situation a few times in the match already, where they love to try to go for it, and maybe they've made it once. Doesn't mean that you'd actually go over there and wait for it, but you're you're aware, you're sort of aware, and you're sort of reading and sort of saying, "Is this the time they're going to do it again?" And you're and and you're aware enough that you're not surprised if they do it again. Right. So, I think that's a great point you're making all day. Is that look, you don't need to cover the great shots. You need to cover eighty percent of the court. Let them go for it. And you, you want to make you want to make the, the highlight reel shot look appealing to them. And I, you want to make I, them feel that if they hit it, oh boy, that's how I've got to win a point. Uh oh. Right. Right. And so, so that's you know, that's I think again where players kind of lose sight of it. It's okay if the other team hits the ball, you know. I mean, but it's really comes to that that philosophy has to be worked in conjunction with where do I want the ball to land across the net and where should I go stand next right. without those two elements with that philosophy, then things get messy and, and there, there is no, there's no way to, you know, make that actual um, strategy, you know, work. Yeah. Um, Guys, uh, if you got a comment or a question, and I'm about to sneeze. So excuse me if I do um, go ahead and load them up in the, uh, in the, in the chat area. would love to know what's on your mind. Um, and I'd I think also the like biggest, to the biggest the biggest question for me right now, now that I'm kind of noticing this, is um, I'm noticing that here you are on the hard court, and yet the grass looks perfect to your right. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait a minute! Well, it looks perfect over there because it's those those are the croquet people. So they oh, okay <laughs> they take over that bank of four courts. I think once every week. I don't know whatever, and everyone's grumbling right because tennis balls go over the croquet pitch. They're going, yeah. ah, those damn tennis players, you know, and, and we're, and we're, we're, Hey, a little help, a little help. And they go, yeah, we go, ah, those damn croquet players. Anyway, right. <laughs> that's, that's what's going on over there. Um, I want you, Jeff, to think about one of the strokes that was hit in this point about uh, give us some ideas, a technique. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, what I'll do is kind of, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of replay the point, but Jeff, I want you to pick one out. And then, guys, if there's one of the shots that you want to, if you want to ask about technique, um, about shot choice in terms of where you want it to land over there or core positioning, uh, go ahead and do so. God, now, now I'm hearing sound. I think let's um... – 
Let's focus on Mai on her three shots after the serve. Okay. And and her early racket prep. You know, um, and, and so so what I'm getting at is is that um, you don't need to have you know perfect classic tennis technique, but what you need to have is quick preparation so your feet are working then on time and and you're reading the ball coming into play so she does that really well she comes back dick's got the ball here boom and right away she's she's already there it is right there that subtle little turn right there yeah almost unnoticeable and then she's ready to go she can play it off of both feet then she's got good control on it then to put you back you know on your on your heels on the lob <clears throat> Well, she lobs um, right as well here. There as she, it is. She lobs Prep is well. there. But she 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 lobs as well as anyone I play with totally. or against. And I like this play of hers where she just hits this big kind of deep floater, and which means that if, because of the lob was so good, you don't get a chance to really make this sprint back into the court. And so she, you know, she kind of keeps the point at neutral. I think the point right now had Christian made the move back, would still be a semi kind of a neutral position for both teams, N neither team being in high command of the point. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I just like the way Maya is, is so good at being, you know, prepping, you know, before the sh whatever shot she's going to hit. You know, she's so athletic and, and so fast that the, that early prep kind of always puts her, you know, you always feel like she's capable of neutralizing or just – so you know, not hitting, the not hitting we, the big, the biggies, but just really playing balls that you, you, you think you should be able to do more with them, but you kind of can't. Yeah. Well, look, I think, uh, I think early prep also, also neutralizes the opponent or opponents and doubles in terms of what's about to come. So to me, disguise is a huge component in doubles um, in terms of the shot that I'm uh, about to hit based on my really neutral prep even though it's quick it's quick it's out there it's neutral but i don't have different preps depending on the kind of shot that i want to hit so if i'm going to hit a you know a forehand drive that's one look that's one look if i'm going to hit a drop shot forehand well that's another look if i'm going to hit a forehand lob all right and and these are all potential things if i'm going to hit a, a kind of a short cross court uh, angle roller I don't want to I, I want to keep them where they are I don't want them to know what I'm about to do and right. so in terms of stroke technique I think it's really great for you guys to think about and this is th something Mr. Stowe got inside my head about was you know look let's keep this thing so basic so fundamental you could hit any shot off of that off of that prep yep absolutely what we got here? Major Dan says, uh, seems to me that the cross court backhand uh, near the singles line of the deuce court service box is not a crazy difficult shot and does not, and does not, or does put her partner right in front of the ball. Is it really such a bad shot? So we're going back to right now, this shot right there. And I think, uh, let's see, Dick hit the volley. I think that the, the depth of Dick's saying right now that this is yeah right now that this high uh, it's, and it's and like I said it's not that that court isn't available, but but Dick hits such a deep ball this drifting kind of volley ball back that and you can see Mai's off her back foot right now as well. She's going to hit this ball, so I I think it really comes down to you know Major Dan, um, how comfortable are you with executing that shot? You know, is my capable of hitting that shot? Absolutely. From that position, probably not. Well, I think I think you can go for it here, but like you said, she's on her back foot, so she's going to need some some extreme racket speed because she's slightly moving back. Yeah. But she's got no body weight moving forward, and and is it possible to get it over in this direction with a little bit of dip on it? It is, but. I just, you know, I, Dick, I just, Dick is a, he's a seasoned veteran <laughs> of, of, you know, of this whole right. deal. And so, you know, here she hasn't hit the ball yet. He's right there. One check, one split check and one large step to his right with his range and his reach. And he's got most of that covered anyway. 
So I mean, it's going to have to be just saying, an unbelievable shot. To, yeah, yeah. To so he's he's, he's actually agreeing because the depth of the shot forced, you know, forced a lob. But if the ball was shorter, of course, the ball's shorter. Yep. Sure. Now, now shot choices are there. But if the ball's shorter, the lob would also be a great play as well. So I think, I think to Jeff's right. point that he started off with today is that this roller over here, the sharp angle roller, is an ESPN shot. Now, if, if, if the ball lands short in here and I'm moving forward and I've got a forehand, guys, I might slide it over here with a little underspin. And the reason for that is because I can efficiently move through that shot, get this opponent having to hit up. I'm not going for the winner. I'm going for him to have to hit up. And because the ball was short, I get to move in. Now, now this is a problem. But, but, but to think that you're just going to roll the cross-court thing, I mean, once in right. a while, yeah, but, man, can I do that every time I get that, that short? No. So right. I think, I think maybe, you know, you know, if, if, if this, if this pattern repeated a lot and then one of the balls comes up a little, like you said, comes up a little shorter for my knowing what's going on, Dick, Dick might actually take liberties with that position, knowing that she's been lobbing off of this and actually give her a little more room, you know, later on in the set, because if, if the standard play is she's throwing up the lob, then, then it's like she could flick a little something over there, a little cut, like you just said, Brent, you know, on that, but, but, Ball for ball, I think she picked the right, definitely picked the right shot to hit. I think, uh, what is Brent? Uh, Rich says uh, the final shot, um, maybe Mai could have called Christian off, you know, uh, in that. But I think, I think that's a possibility, Rich. I think, um, you know, we're watching this in slow motion, and I think things happen at a certain pace. And I don't know, um, you know, uh, I don't know how vocal my is on the court necessarily, you know, in terms of calling, you know, I got it, leave it, whatever. Um, so we're talking about I this think, shot here. Right. Um, I think some of it is, I mean, my, my could have said something, but look, Christian, if, if we he's, put him in, this he's case, the stick in the spokes in this one right now. <laughs> well, but I'm just saying too, that this is maybe the two out of the 10 times when he gets stuck and actually doesn't come up with a shot. I mean, not that he do anything great. I'm sure right. what he's trying to do is he's just trying to go low and slow over here in front of me. And it just doesn't work out. I'm not saying this, right. this, I'm not saying this is going to happen every time with, with Christian Choi. Um, right. But it just kind of, it just kind of doesn't end up where he, where he wants. I think, right. you know, Robin asked a couple of good things about, uh, and I want to get, I want to get back to major Dan's point here about servers and extreme one up one back formation. They were off of, off the return, I guess. Um, but, but Robin is saying about practicing overheads and does anyone, you know, actually practice this overhead? And so we're, I mean, this, well, look, all that I'm thinking about is not practicing the overhead as much as can I get back enough so that I can think to myself, could I, re could I reclaim my net position? And, and, and so, I mean, I can't, I mean, is there a ball machine that'll perfectly put it up there and can I run back and practice the same thing over and over again? No, it isn't for me. But all I'm thinking about is more, I'm thinking more core position on it, not technique. I'm just thinking, can I hit it in such a way like that I can actually somehow recover? And right. look, if, if this thing had drifted over here to Christian, I would have been stuck. Or if my had played the lob and started moving in, I would have been stuck. And it would have been either I got a retreat as I'm hitting it. Um, and some of that is the knowledge, Jeff, of you know your opponents. Right. Right. Well, if we know that, that one of them likes to play in the backcourt a lot, well, then all I'm thinking about is where do I find that player? Right. And, and – uh, but the, but, the, but the air point, too, here is that if, if I play it to Christian and I'm stuck here, I'm okay. I don't need to be either up or back. Right. You've got to be able to play shots from within this part of the court. And just stop calling it no man's land because that's such a negative connotation. 
It's just a different it's, part of the court. It's just a different part of the court that you, you, what we like to do is transition through it. It doesn't mean you're running through it and never hitting a ball there. It means that you're going to hit a ball from there and then go someplace else. You, you know, it's very difficult to play a point from that position and be successful at it in the higher levels of the game. It happens all day long at three, five level. Um, but that's skill based is why those people get trapped in those positions. Um, but I like, uh, I like um, Steve's, I like Steve's comment here about, uh, he said, what if, what if might hit a nasty slice instead? Uh, those are tricky to volley. Um, I think, I think in reality, um, to try to hit a nasty slice where Dick's, Dick's volley lands pretty deep. Yeah. I, I, this shot, you can't really do that on. And if, and if you back up enough to where the depth kind of gets dissipated because you're so far back, a nasty slice is just going to, is going to, by the time it gets here, there's going to be nothing on it. Here, here's the other, you know, part of the geometry, you know, lesson when you're playing guys. And that's this, is that, Geometry creates angles where where the what what the what the uh, the person who has the ball what possibilities are most likely the the your opponents are choosing what possibilities are most likely and then also filtering from this player. The other thing about the geometry is that what's the distance between the player who's hitting the ball and when they can make contact with the court with the ball. So for my to hit even the cross court roller, that ball has to travel a long distance, which means that's time, which means a player like Dick Johnson isn't overly worried about that shot because that ball is going to be in the air a fair amount of time. And he's going to be able to see it, read it, move forward and all that. Here's another one. And that is everybody on this court right here knows their own skill set. So what, what is my most comfortable with in that situation? That's the ball she's going to play 99% of the time, right? I know there are certain balls that I'll try and slide in sometimes. Not my favorite that I see the opportunity. Maybe I go there or you know what? I think I'm better off just ripping this thing down the center of the court, taking my position in and doing something else with the volley that's going to come up rather than rather than trying something that really isn't in my wheelhouse or a shot that I'm really not that confident. And even though the opportunity is there to hit it. So Jeff, both Dick and I know that, that she's starting to retreat because we know that the Dick's volley's got depth. It's got some serious depth. So let's say that she rips it and we know, and I'm almost thinking to myself, God, come on, babe. Why don't you rip it? Because I know you're backing up on this. And the sooner I get it, that means the longest distance you'll have to run. I'm thinking drop volley all day long. I mean, I'm thinking right, right. now, if she decides to go up the line, why would I volley back deep to her? Right. I'm thinking if, if, if you give me something hard forehand or backhand, I'm going and I don't, you know, Christian's over here. So I got to make sure that it's, it's in this part yeah. of the court. But I'm anticipating that if this happens, I guess it's the classic, you know, if then type of formula. Well, if she does this, then I know what I'm going to do. Now, if this ball had been short and she was inside the court when she made and, and she wasn't backing up, you're darn right. I'm not thinking draw volley is a possibility. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, I, you know, I mean, we laugh about it, but you and I both know that, that we read what that opponent is doing in the in this nanosecond right here and we read what their ensuing court position is going to be after they execute the shot and even my probably knows i can't risk driving it because of where i am both these guys are now up at net so my my best shot is to go ahead and throw pull up um Okay. What, uh, what do you think Tom's saying here, Jeff? Uh, if he comes, he comes with, if he comes with a cross court rolling roller, isn't the middle open. Um, Tom, why don't you detail that a little bit more for us? Um, 
in the great Pete Kelly with, we called it Pete's Place. Okay, that's cool. Uh, Steve Zach, if her lob was closer to the line, would you have gone with a for for a backhand overhead? Yeah, probably. I mean, if if this thing had been, but it's it's pretty much, I mean, it's pretty close to the singles line. Yeah. Um, here's the reason I want to try to get around it. Well, look. First of all, I will tell you, don't think that well. I got to hit this. Other than, I mean, she's going right down the single sideline. I think, Jeff, you would agree. This is perfect placement um, rather than yeah. trying to go close to the double sideline because now you're risking all this in here. But I, I'm going to try to get around this because I can get a little bit, a little bit more umph on getting the ball somewhat deep and a little bit better directional control. If I'm back in here, if I'm back in here and trying to play the high backhand volley, I mean, you know, I know yeah. I look, I know I look pretty buff, and I'm in the gym a lot and all that kind of stuff. And I can really, <laughs> have it off. but short of that, um, I'm not doing much without high backhand volley from this part of the court. So um, I'm doing everything I can to get around to be able to hit an overhead. All right, yeah, I, I think I, I think too, you know, as we you know we always we speculate. Well, if they did, if they, if she did this or he did that, then you know wouldn't this you know so the one here you know wouldn't it open up the center? Um, one somebody commented here. Um, uh, uh, I think I, I think op opens up the center, and so yes, if she hits it perfectly. And that's and then then we you know again every time we strike the ball there's risk reward we're deciding risk reward right in, in this you know what what's the payoff here and so if you're if if in this situation the choice was if I hit a perfect roller you know then yes the middle of the court between you and Dick does get opened up and Christian can probably squeeze the net a little bit and maybe make something happen unless unless Dick counters. With an equally, you know, great ESPN highlight reel shot, which we see happen sometimes, right? One fabulous shot creates another opportunity for a fabulous shot. So I think, you know, all the all the you know ifs and buts and what ifs um, are great, but it really comes down to you know playing uh, journeyman tennis is what gets the win. As you said, Brent, if we can cover 80% of the court and put balls back in the court, we're probably going to win the match. Um, and, and you let them have the two or three highlight reel shots, and you don't care. Is it interesting to you that so many comments in the last half hour have been based on the cross-court roller, on opening up that part of the court? Well, what if I cross-court right. roller? Well, what if I, well, you know, if I got it shorter in the court? Well, what if I hit a nasty slice over there? It's, 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 it's interesting to me that, that, that looking at this where a lot of players are kind of going, well, what would be the ESPN thing? What, I mean, what would be right. the shot that I actually don't have most of the time? Shouldn't I be trying that? Because let's, let's be honest, guys, if you can hit that cross court roller, as you move back onto your back foot and end up two, two or three feet behind the baseline, I think Jeff are putting you on the tour and I know for, I can speak for Jeff that if, if we can teach you to hit that shot and put you in the tour, we're probably taking 75% of the, of the winnings. Right. Yeah. So um, Jeff, I think one of the points that you're making is that you've got to go with your own. And, and this gets down to, you have to know your own game. You have to know who you right. are you, in the you, court. You got to know who you are as a player, what's your brand and yeah. you got to know your toolbox. And so great question here from Michael saying, so do you ever go for the ESPN shot, even if, if only to mess with the minds of the opponent? Absolutely. Do I, do I do it? Brent's played with me enough to know that, yep, I'll, I'll press the edges sometimes. But I press the edges with, with a tool in my toolbox that I'm very confident with. So that court positioning, what am I going for, is actually I'm not afraid to actually stay relaxed and go ahead and go for it which is different than reaching into the toolbox for something that I rarely reach for at all. I never practice it. And Hey, 
how about now's a good time to try it? <laughs> Which is kind of the way it happens um, for a lot of players. It's, it's the extreme moment and all of a sudden it's like, hey, I see a little opening over there. Let me try this, you know, this little roller and maybe you hit primarily a backhand slice. I don't know. You, you well, know. Does Look, that make any kind of sense? Well, no, it does. And, and for me, I want to sort of condition what, 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 what my answer would be to that question, which is, to me, I might go for what looks like an ESPN highlight. However, I've already set that up earlier in the match because I hit another shot from very similar position where I hit it to a different part of the court. Maybe I hit a lob. Maybe we've been in this situation at this point maybe two or three times already. Right. And Mize hit two or three lobs. And now all of a sudden we both think, well, here, here comes their lob. And she goes cross court with it. So you might think that's an ESPN highlight shot, but in reality, she really, I mean, it's like a quarterback, right? I mean, the quarterback goes back to throw a pass and, and the, the you know, announcers are always saying he moved that free safety off with his eyes. He did this and it's all just, all the stuff that you do before that leads right. up to it. So right. look, sometimes I'll go for the ESPN shot because I want to put in their mind, you know, that's the way I think. I'm kind of a crazy doubles player, man. I think about that. And if I can actually get it over there, it doesn't have to be ESPN highlight winner, but it could be I get the ball in that direction enough to where they're now thinking, oh man, I better, I better cover that shot. Well, now, now for me, I'm thinking, well, now bread and butter is probably a little bit more available to me. So, right, would, right. Would, does, that, does that, does that, you know, does a successful execution of it then um, give you three extra feet down the middle of the court on the next one? Maybe. You yeah, know. but um, so I, I think when you think ESPN shot, guys, is I would not, I mean, I would coach you to not go for that until you've established in their minds in a similar situation like this point that, that, that typically you do something else. And, and once you've established that in their minds that you typically do this thing, now they start to anticipate that thing. And maybe you can pull off another shot that is lower percentage, but it really is an ESPN highlight because you've already started to shift them with what you've done before. I, Right. I think I'm making sense. I'm making sense to myself, but that. Well, I think I think when you play when you play, you know, a good you come out of the gates playing a good solid journeyman brand of of doubles, right? You are presenting a pattern. You're presenting patterns, 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 and in doing so, now you're creating another option later on in the match, which is kind of what you're describing, Brent. Right. Is that is that and so, but you have to be able to execute the standard journeyman serve first volley deep return first volley deep or or beating the server that you've got to you've got to establish some of these things before you start dipping into the the uh you know the espn bag to to do that and and like i said I, i'm using that term as an extreme um kind of example but it is it is what i see a lot of guys get in trouble and so they immediately look for the exit and so for me, for Mai to try off her back foot to flip this thing cross court, she's looking for the exit. She's not looking to have the point continue. She's looking to get out. And if I can get my opponents to live in that space, we're going to blow through them. Yeah, we're going to blow through it. them fast. Love it. You know, so um, anyway, I hope that makes sense. No, it does. That's great. Guys, um, we're at the 52-minute mark. I got I to get a call here in eight minutes. So Boom. So, you know, again, it's about me, not about, anyway. Um, guys, any more comments, any more questions? We've got a couple more minutes here before we um, close today's episode number 245 down of what's the right shot. Really appreciate everyone showing up. A lot of fun for me, Jeff. I know that you love this stuff. Yeah. And um, let's see if you have any more questions after we shut it. I'm Brent at webtennis.com. Jeff, we're... Wait, Jeff at uh, Jack was 365, something like that? Yep. Jeff yep. at jacklitz365.com. You can reach Jeff over there. And, um, yeah, we might do some more gold ball hunting stuff. I don't know. I keep keep uh, trying to twist a, the arm of Jacklitz, and he's, he's going, you know, 
maybe we should just keep them waiting a little bit longer. <laughs> kind of tease them. So, all right, guys, thank you very much for hanging out today. Everyone get out there and help someone else have a spectacular day. Uh, Jeff, we're going to do this again real soon. Right on. Wait a minute. That's not the gold ball hunting sign off. Jeff, we're going to do this again real soon. Can't wait.